What is up? Welcome to American Built Exotics. I have not made a video on my Lamborghini uh, project car in uh, a year. The reason for that, I got married last year. I moved. My wife and I are in the process of looking for property to build a shop. So my car is currently in storage unit um, um, pending a location. That's why I have not posted a video. I'm very, very close to firing up that engine. Literally just a couple weekends worth of work um, and I can fire that engine. For right now, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to share my personal story of why I wanted to build a Lamborghini. I'll share a little bit about my inspirations, kind of my background, my skill sets or lack of skill sets, some of the highs and lows of this project and just the, the progression of it. So really my inspiration came as a child, probably just like most people, as a little kid. My grandma gave me a peachy or a folder, but it was a peachy with a Lamborghini Countach on it. It was a white Lamborghini Countach. You open it up and it shows, you know, the scissor doors. It's got the stats. It was just iconic, you know, that was the birth of the supercar. I started collecting Hot Wheels and Micro Machines and of course the Lamborghini Countach was my favorite. I was reading the Guinness Book of World Records and it showed the fastest production car was the Lamborghini Diablo at just over 200 miles an hour and it had this black and white picture and it was just, um, you know, at that time it was like 200 miles an hour, whoa, and it was just this mythical unicorn uh, a car that was just like un unobtainable you know you couldn't you couldn't watch videos of it this is pre-internet days to get any information on cars you had to get it from books or magazines um dumb and dumber came out and i think it was like 94 and uh, they go and buy a lamborghini diablo it was just just amazing as a you know i was probably a teenager then it was just like that is just the coolest car in the world so fast forward a little bit to when I was in high school, uh, my family and I had moved to this little town in Keno, Oregon, just outside of uh, Klamath Falls. And there was this run down, just hillbilly uh, car lot. And it actually was called Cowboy Auto. And it was a dive. And in that lot, they had a Lamborghini Countach, bright yellow. So I was curious and I went and, uh, went up there and looked at it, started looking inside, seeing like most of the guts were out of it. There was like a dash, it was made of wood. And then just like, okay, this is a kit car. Probably was Fiero based. It was a short version, a non-stretch um, kit, um, had damage. I think uh, this is probably like 97. They wanted like $25,000 for this, you know, kit car. But that really right then and there was the birth of the idea of, hey, maybe I could build a car, you know, someday. That's kind of where it started. Fast forward to my late 20s, maybe early 30s, that idea of building a kit car popped in my head because I was, I was looking around, like, you know, I need a project. What can I do? So I started looking in uh, to kits and I came across several different kits and really seen that the kit car world really moved into you know a replica um uh, much much better quality much better builds and there really was kind of a golden age of kit cars or replicas in the mid to 2000s uh the quality of these builds were just phenomenal based off of uh you know skill sets of individuals who were building these and so that really inspired me and I started looking at things and it's like, you know, this is an obtainable project. I knew I lacked the skills of it because the power of the internet, you can learn anything. The internet is an incredible tool to learn stuff. It's a shame that so many people do so much destructive stuff with it and tear things down rather than build things up. But, you know, use it correctly. It's incredible. And if it wasn't for the internet, there's, there's no way I would be where I'm at with this project today just because of the information that is freely shared. I think about, it was about 33 where I did, made the decision that, okay, I'm going to build a Lamborghini from the ground up. Didn't have a perfect plan. I was just like, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as it, as it goes. I had a, kind of a budget that I would set annually. I ended up getting some plans for a replica chassis. And that was really one of the things too. I did not want a Fiero. Coming across these 
these plans for a replica chassis was was just it was exciting it was like okay i can i can have a performance car here so i got these plans bought them ended up ordering metal i was like all right i'm into it and you know spent a couple thousand dollars on material started chopping up uh, tube steel i was at work chopping this stuff up some people or, um, you know, they're, they're like, what are you doing, Rick? And I was just like, oh, I've just got a personal project. And, uh, you know, they didn't say much. And they start coming in the next day and they just see all these pieces of tube still laying there chopped up. And they're like, this is a little bit more than a project. And, you know, they're kind of probing a little bit. And and I was just, and I didn't really want to say, hey, I'm building a Lamborghini. You know, I just, that just sounds stupid. I have no credibility. Um, I didn't want people talking. And, and so they continue to probe and, and you know, I was just like, well, I'm, 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 build, I'm building a chassis. And they're like, chassis for what? Chassis for a car. What kind of car? Um, just this exotic car, you know? And they're like, just tell me what you're building. I was like, I'm building a Lamborghini. And, and of course they start laughing and, and, and the people start talking. And it's like, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's gonna, he's gonna, he has no clue. And I don't, I didn't. It's just kind of funny. You know, once it started getting some some parts together and it started you know, taking shape and looking like a chassis, how that kind of flipped. Where then, like, you know, Rick's an expert on chassis. Are you? If you need stuff done, go go to him. And I'm like, I got people like bringing all their car problems to me. I'm like, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. I can't fix yours. It's just like, no, I, I I'm not welding your car. <laughs> And so it's just it's just kind of funny how, how how that works, human nature. Even I, you know, I told my family that I was uh, that was that was a few people I did tell. It turns out that they didn't they thought I was crazy and they didn't think I could and they didn't believe that I would do it. And it's just like, okay. And so I just it was just kind of chugging away privately at it. And then I I I, I built a chassis um, and it turned out phenomenal. The welds were great on it, and you know I used the lasers. You know I didn't have a lot of the right equipment and stuff like that, but that that chassis is plumb. It is straight. It's not warped, and it, a lot of it again, again, it's just getting information of how to, you know, just YouTube, how to do this, how to do that. And ended up getting a very very phenomenal um, base for my project to start. So kind of after that, I needed a body. I'd done research, and so this was kind of really the next big investment part into this project. I uh, decided to um, get a body kit from Brazil, and in this project, this was definitely the worst financial decision I made. It's actually the worst financial decision I've made in my entire life. And I did a lot of research into what kits were available, and at this time when I started, really the kit car world was dying. Lamborghini had gone after a lot of these. It was kind of more underground. The golden age of building replicas were over. And so I had limited um, resources and, and I had multiple reputable builders uh, recommend this particular kit. And I went in partnership with uh, another builder which uh, him and I have become friends over the years. And so be because of that, we could cut down on shipping costs. But that whole thing was, was, was really just a nightmare. A little quick story. At that time, you know, the US dollar was pretty strong against the Brazilian, uh, I think, is it the real? So you could get a lot of value out of a US dollar. And so I, I bought a complete kit, interior, exterior, all the parts for $5,000. Um, I ended up purchasing all the carbon fiber parts for like an, another like twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars I don't remember exactly. I bought the glass for, again for um, somewhere around two grand. So I was just uh, somewhere around ten grand uh, roughly. It was six thousand dollars to ship Great it. Cash, I went into partnership with my buddy and we, we were splitting that cost and so that's what, what made it practical. Again I don't want to mention the person's name who built it. You know some of you guys can figure that out from Brazil. You know, it was, that whole process was sketchy to me. It's as I'm sending money to Brazil, all this money. And we were in good communication, you know, with the builder. Um, he was sending photos and, and, and videos and stuff like that. So that, that part was not shady. What really became the problem was um, the shipping. Both kits are done. They're ready to ship. They're loaded in a container. Um, we paid our money. And I asked some basic questions. It's like, how do I receive the content in that container? 
what are my responsibilities, what do I need to do? And just some basic questions, never, never could get a real straight answer. So this container with our bodies gets sent out. First was told it could get sent to Oregon, the state that I lived at that time. Then they said it couldn't. Then they, it's gonna have to go to San Francisco, which was about a five hour drive with, from me, which was fine. And the day that they ship it out, it's like, oh no, it got shipped to um, Long Beach, California. It's like, hopefully that's not a problem. It's like, yeah, it's a problem. I mean, it's 12 hours away. Um, but it's like, all right, we'll make it work. So it's shipped out. I still don't have a shipping manifest. I still don't know how or where am I supposed to pick this, pick my stuff up and how I'm supposed to get it. And I'm asking these questions and I'm not getting an answer. So I start calling other shipping brokers. I had a contact at the, actually I had a contact at the gym and he told me, he's just like, oh, don't worry about it. Once it gets here, we'll pick it up and we'll move it. And I'm like, uh, it's, it's, it's gotta be more than that. It's not just like once it gets here, it gets where? I don't even know where it's going. <laughs> and he's like, Rick, don't worry about it. Do this all the time. You know, it, it takes a while for shipping. It, you know, it probably took like two, three months. And, and I'm just like, something just sent right with me. And I, so I start calling brokers. I get a hold of this one broker and tell him, I said, yeah, I got a couple of uh, body kits in there. I got some glass. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just like, this is major problems. I was like, so is, it, is it DOT approved? You got the paperwork of that? You didn't file paperwork? There's late fees for that? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I didn't file anything. I've asked these questions and, and uh, he's like, well, they're probably gonna break your glass for one, you got mirrors? He's like, yeah, there's mirrors. Well, th those need to be, you need paperwork for those. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm like, well, what can I do? He's like, well, you should have called me before. I said, like, well, I didn't call you. <laughs> I didn't, I had no clue. And, uh, and I'm tr literally trying, trying to get answers and, and you know, talking to this, uh, to this guy. He's like, well, yeah, we're not gonna, I, I can't really help you. Another buddy who has uh, a contact, um, which is a major shipper who has contracts with the military. He said, once it gets there, I can pick it up for you. And then I told him what was going on with it. And he's like, man, dude, I can't help you. He's like, if I pick up that container, I could lose my contract with the government. If you can get it moved, you can store it in my place, but I cannot touch that container without paperwork. You're gonna have to find a crooked broker who will push that through. I'm just like, what the heck? And, you know, I put all this money out there. And so I ended up contacting the builder. I'm like, dude, you have to find me a broker to receive this. Because essentially what was going on was the, the broker there pushes it to Long Beach, California, but there is no receiver uh, to forward that somewhere. And again, I didn't have a shipping manifest. So the container arrives there at Long Beach, does not have the proper paperwork to forward it. They scan it. They see that there's cars in it. So it's automatically red flagged and then it's shipped away to another facility. Um, so now I'm paying like 350 bucks a day. I gotta pay for the container, chassis that the container's sitting on for the property. I had to pay for the x-ray. Of course, they had to inspect it. It might've been a good thing that that happened because when they did inspect it, they did damage to the bodies. And I think once they did some damage, they stopped inspecting it because they didn't want to be liable. So they never seen the glass. They never seen all this stuff. It's there for a week. I do not have the shipping manifest. I need to have the original copy. I just had a, a emailed copy. Long story short, finally got it. You know, had to send that to Philadelphia. I got a broker in Miami. I'm picking it up in Long Beach and it came from Brazil. And it's just like, what? I, I'm like so confused. I have no clue what's going on. I said I would never do international shipping again. I ended up just getting a truck. I drive down there uh, make the tent the, you know the 12 hour drive or whatever once I get there I hit rush hour it takes me three hours just to get to LA or through LA to Long Beach I just show up and I'm just like hey I got a container I need to pick it up I have no clue what to do I got these cops like following me around uh, um, Homeland Security They're, like thinking I'm some you know criminal or it's just like I, I got a company rig it's got a company logo on it I'm just trying to get my stuff they're like, oh, you're not commercial licensed? And I'm just like, no, I'm just here to get myself. Oh, well, there's added fees. That's 1700 bucks. Like, I'm forking out all this extra money. Still haven't even got it. I had to pay extra money to a broker. I think that was like 
$2,500. So literally I'm close to like 10 grand and just shipping. And they start unloading it and the bodies are destroyed. They've been cracked and it's just like, oh my gosh. It's just a terrible ex you know, experience. This is supposed to be like, oh, I'm getting a Lamborghini. This is an exciting part. And, and you know, you fork out all this money and you see it and it's just like, it's, it's, it's garbage. But I ordered all these carbon fiber parts and they, carbon fiber parts and they wrap the guy wrapped them in literally hot dog wrappers <laughs> i mean hot dog wrapper and then some of them just had like straw or, or twine uh with cardboard just kind of taped on it and the carbon fiber just got completely destroyed it was awful oh yeah that'll buff out you know i load the bodies up on a trailer and i start driving and i stop at a gas station and just like and i'm getting people that are coming by man it's a shame that those those never got installed or used. Just take them to the junkyard? I was like, no, they're brand new. <laughs> Whoa. I get them home, you know, the quality of them, or it, it was subpar quality. Is it the right shape? Yes. Can I build a car with it? Yes. 2020, I would never have bought it. There was other things where I agreed with my buddy. My buddy had to pay another $2,000 because he lived in Michigan. Part of that deal was I'd build them a whole bunch of um, chassis parts, which cost me a thousand bucks. <laughs> it was the worst financial decision of this whole project. It is what it is. And it's just part of the story. After that, watched some videos again, YouTube, fixed all the damage stuff, put some steel in it, and then really kind of lost um, some uh, uh, momentum with it for sure. And probably didn't do much for a, a duration of time. And I've really kind of just put the, the body part of it uh, on the shelf. And then, uh, you know, time went by, just like, oh, let me get back on my project. And so I started working on the suspension, I bought some Lamborghini Hercule wheels. Those were my favorite wheels. And that was super, super exciting. Put those on and, you know, pushed my chassis for the first time. You know, I'm probably three years into my project now and having a rolling chassis and threw that body on it and it looks like a car and that was the time where like my mom's like holy cow he's building a lamborghini and my mom believed me had some faith in me that was a cool moment to be able to have a rolling chassis so my initial plan was to put a bmw v12 in in my project car. It was 300 horsepower. I was gonna mate it up to a Audi transaxle. As time went on, I didn't want a car that really underperformed. So I ended up buying a Mercedes V12, low miles on it. I think it only had like 15,000 miles on it. And that was a much bigger motor. It was longer than the BMW and that caused some issues. So I don't want to get too much in the engine because I want to make that a, a story in itself, but I ended up buying a Lamborghini Murcielago engine. Just a little quick note, the car that did that engine did come out of has been on a, a couple of um, prominent YouTube channels, with, you know, people that have uh, uh, you know, over a million plus um, subscribers. Uh, so the car is, I want to say it's well known, but it is, it's, it's been on YouTube. So. Um, that is, it is kind of cool. I'll keep that mystery uh, going a little more because a mystery is um, always more thrilling than the whole story. So I, I did get that engine. And then that point, I had that mindset of, I can't afford a real Lamborghini. And then once I got that, I kind of broke through a, a threshold of that, that mindset. You can, you can make your dreams come true. You know, you work at it and you know just you know you keep looking and, and looking for solutions and and so at that point i was just like okay i'm done you know with the body i was like i'm done with the replica parts and so i just started buying really all oem parts and just making shrewd negotiations i'm just lowballing all kinds of people on on ebay people would just flat out tell me no um you, you go through that i mean you get i got called a jew and you know <laughs> all kinds of things that or that i was worse than a jew I didn't care. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, hey, who's willing to make a deal? I found people were willing to make deals. If you're buying multiple parts, I was, I was able to get some really good deals on things. And so a lot of that money I lost in, you know, my body, I made up on just making deals on getting parts. And so at that point, I was just like, you know, where I'm at in this build, I need to buy OEM panels. And this is pre, right before COVID. Um, and so I started looking into, uh, you know, getting real panels and it was obtainable. Now with 
inflation, hyperinflation, and the cost of things gone up, it's very difficult. Those parts are much more rare now. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna keep my body, the body kit that I have. My desire is really to get OEM panels or OEM replacement panels, but uh, at this point, that's kind of uh, up in the air. The aesthetics, all the badging, all the lights, all the parts and stuff like that, those are all OEM. Uh, and I want it as, as close as possible. Uh, my car is really more so Murcielago based as far as the parts, um, as, you know, the drivetrain and stuff like that. So I might call it like a Diablo 6.2, calling it a, a yellow-headed step devil with the idea of it's not a real Lamborghini. It wasn't built in Italy. It's American built but you know it has a lot of real parts and just like a, a stepchild you might be part of the family but you're not and so that's what that's the really idea of calling it a yellow-headed step devil if you watched all the way to the end i appreciate you taking the time go ahead type in yellow-headed step devil and if you're the first person to do that and you live within the 48 states i will ship you a, a free ab hat i'm sharing this because it's, it's a downtime and maybe it inspires somebody or, you know some people know i might get 10 10 or 20 views on this i'm not doing this to get views or or whatever i'm just simply trying to share the information um that that i've had that's why and that's why i started this channel because there isn't that much information out there i don't like making videos it's not my skill set editing it takes a lot of time but uh trying to do a little bit more of it thanks for watching Thank you.